How's it going guys? So back again for another video. Uh, my name's Steve, this is Impact Zone Spearfishing. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Essentially today we're getting out onto the Three Mile Reef. We're jumping in the Matt's fiberglass boat. It's got an absolute mental donk on the back. You guys will see that shortly. Um, and we're gonna punch it straight into the wind. It's a very windy day today, so it's not ideal at all. You can probably hear the wind quality in the microphone. I'm sorry for that. Trust me, not every video so this is just I'm having to film this intro with like a 20 knot gusting wind. But his boat can handle it, so we're shooting straight out because we get in the water any chance you get. It's so much fun, you've got to give it a go. We're going to shoot out, try and catch ourselves a kingfish or a crayfish. Uh, they're not part of the demersal band that's on right now, so anything living near the bottom, few fish, uh, snapper, those sort of things. That's a DHU fish for you East, Eastern guys. Um, Jewfish and that, they're all part of the demersal band, so we can't take them today. So if I see one, I might try and pat it and swim right up to it. Who knows? The uh, main thing today is just to have fun. It's, all what, it's always what diving's about. Uh, crayfish and all the rest of it, they're always nice to have, um, but also you got to fish sustainably, so want to get a big one. I don't know if I'll try and get my bag limit, I don't really care for that today. I just really want to have a bit of fun with Matt and get out in the water again, because I haven't seen him in ages and it's going to be a really fun dive. So why don't you guys jump on board with us, we'll send it out to three miles and I'll introduce you to Matt when he gets here. You. Alright, Matt's rocked up, this is the rig. A massive Susie on the back <laughs> and we're going to send it. Just need this to be real I don't need no fairy 
<laughs> Alright, so I won't explain now why I did what I did, but uh, I will explain it later. But there was a very big whaler hanging around, so we've jumped in the boat and we're going to steam off to the next spot, jump in there, try and grab a crayfish or two at the next spot. There wasn't any kingfish about, but uh, yeah, I'll tell it to you in a bit. Phew. Did you really think that you could just fix it like that? Coming over here, trying to feed me your version of fact. Just how long did you think that you could fake it? Can't hold on, we already started breaking. I'm not yours, so stop acting like you own me and own me. No, you're never gonna show me. Sun's going down. It's a bit, a bit dark in the water, so we're just going to be finishing off with a bit of a squid. And, uh, I'll see you back when I've got to clean up the squid. So I'm down at the marina and I'm just having an enjoyable afternoon looking at the sunset and wanted to give you guys a rundown on the experience yesterday with the shark. I say experience rather than attack or encounter and stuff like that because it's just an experience. That's all it is. It's, it's something I live for and I love to bits. It's, it's really quite a uh, different kind of vibe when you run into a shark like that. So essentially, I will run you through the clip now if we switch over. So the best way I find to survive a shark encounter and a uh, shark experience is to begin with a nice head scratch. It initiates a mutual friendship and uh, forms a bond preventing a bite. So, <laughs> no, but okay, in, in all seriousness, the number one thing I always look for when I run into a shark is its attitude. And right, right here, right about here is when I first saw the shark. It's a dusky whaler. And um, right here, all I'm looking for is the angle of its fins. If they're pointed downwards, they can use them like similar to a rust rudder system on a boat make sharp pinpoint turns it's the sign of an aggressive or an excited shark now the next thing is if we get it moving again is the speed this thing flew past me at some serious pace sharks are not always swimming at this pace um, it generally means that they're hunting or excited by the presence of myself or the shark that i was swimming alongside something got it going uh, once i lost sight of it I knew it would only be a matter of time before it reappeared, so I kept the lookout in multiple directions and make sure that I am not showing any vulnerability. This, this means in terms of splashing, swimming, screaming, any of that, I just stayed calm, remained in my position, and uh, it knew that it would come back in for a look eventually. At this point, I reread the shark's behavior. It's completely changed, as you can see. It was slow moving, this means that it's actually conserving its energy. The pectoral fins had moved almost perfectly horizontal, which helps maintain its position in the water column and is no longer a rudder system for it making those sharp turns. The shark's curious. The only thing I need to worry about at this point is a curiosity bite. Sharks actually don't have hands like we do, which mind boggling, I know, but hear, hear me out. Instead, they test if something is edible by biting it. The easiest way to prevent this from happening is to show the shark that it is risking its vital senses if it tries to bite me. Again, I make a charge at the shark. As expected, it turns away. It's beginning to see that I may not be worth the effort and the risk where it could find an easier, less intimidating prey around the next corner of reef. At this point, I'm actually quite confident I have control of the situation and can begin moving back to what I was doing, looking for crayfish. Maintaining a lookout, I see it once more and try to explain with my hands how its pectoral fins are horizontal. I'm now actually quite happy with this shark's behavior and it's more predictable. Uh, unfortunately, with it still hanging around, I actually decide one more charge will be the best thing to secure the situation and try to get my dive buddy to me. When you outnumber a shark, it just loses interest completely. So at this point, we're quite confident it's no longer a threat and continue spearfishing. So sharks actually require multiple sensors all to work within sync. So 
any threat to those sensors and most sharks will actually realize it's probably not worth the effort and it can find something easier around the corner. This is all through my own personal research as it's all a trial and error through what I've used over the seasons and everything like that of diving, but it has saved me from a five meter great white coming up and hitting me on the side. Absolutely incredible encounter. Loved the whole thing of it, but it was terrifying and I wouldn't want anyone to experience it. Seriously though, sharks aren't as bad as they seem. It really is a, the biggest misunderstood creature on the planet in my opinion. And we really need to make form an effort to uh, protect them and research them more in my opinion. I actually don't advise anyone swim with a shark, period. Um, it's quite dangerous and unless you really know what you're doing, it's not worth it. Um, but if you're gonna be in any circumstance, so spear fishing, free diving, scuba diving, anything like that, it doesn't hurt to know, the, know what to do when a shark does appear. And they're not as bad as they seem. Show them a bit of respect, they'll show you a bit of respect. Follow the guidelines that I just gave you guys and uh, you should be right, so. I'll see you guys back home. Dad's making up the squid and the crayfish at the moment. Cannot wait. You. Got a little side note. How gorgeous is this sunset? All right, I'll seriously go home now. <laughs> I haven't actually seen any here, Tucker.